Welcome to Retro Scale Modeling. This is part 17 of the Starnet Star Wars Millennium Falcon build. The scale is 1 to 43. In this part, I'll be doing a, a bit more framework for the um, metal frame that holds the plating and um, finishing off with one of the recess areas that gets fitted into it. So, this video is not a, a long video, but um, the next few processes do take a bit of time. So um, I think it's better to concentrate on those uh, parts of the videos instead of just showing you countless endless framework uh, work. So let's jump into this and see how we get on. Starting off with issue 50, and as you can see on the instructions here, it's uh, mostly building the framework. So just beginning the process of building the rest of the framework for the upper half of, of the Falcon. So this is basically built uh, roughly the same way as the lower one. There's only slight differences um, because there's also uh, different areas that will be left open and so forth. On to issue 51 and this issue we'll see more framework being added. As I've done in previous videos uh, I'm not showing you exactly every part that I'm adding onto the framework. I don't think there's any need. It all goes together in the same way uh, either with a uh, a two hole bracket or four hole bracket and then just screw these on then add the next piece of frame and now issue 52 and before I go on to the issue just a little thing about the little ship I'm pointing out there that was a redesign for the Millennium Falcon believe it or not um, what they were thinking of I have no idea but anyway this issue is a little bit more framework but I'm also building here um, the upper um, bulkheads for the uh, one of the corridors. Now these are put together with uh, magnets because it's going to have a cut away section that you can lift off. So I'm just adding a little bit of super glue uh, to each location point for the pins and for, for the magnets. Have you seen the previous videos uh, for the covers? The, these are exactly done the same way. And once the, the glue is dry, just a test fit to make sure everything is fitting okay. And then it's back to the frame, and I'm adding the um, inner ring now uh, to this. It's a bit tricky to uh, fit this. There is a little location point that matches up with the frame to guide it in, but it's uh, difficult to handle at this point. Now, they do supply you a jig for this to sit on, um, but to do this, but I didn't find it very helpful at all. Um, it's good to support the frame while it's sitting and you're doing uh, something else. But to the actual build itself, I found it better to take it off the jig. Moving on to issue 53, and with this issue, a little bit of framework and some of the interior uh, compartments to be built. I'm using Tamiya's XF53 natural grey, um, or neutral grey, sorry, I should say. Now, in the instruction, it doesn't tell you to paint this, but this is one of the internal um, units that goes inside that will be on display. So uh, I thought painting it would be better. So while that's trying, I'm just going to um, make up a little bit of framework. So I'm doing this slightly out of sequence uh, because of the paint's trying, but uh, it just gives me time to build other parts uh, of the model. It's on the same issue though. So it's back to the recess part. Uh, there, there's a, a big, uh, large uh, box to be fitted in first. And then se several little uh, components going in uh, on various locations. It's important, um, like all these things, to make sure that you get them the proper way around uh, and um, in the proper location. Sometimes you, you may be forgiven to think, well, does it really matter? It's a, a sci-fi ship. It, you know, there's no hard and fast rule to these sort of things. But the, the thing is, as you're building it, you may have to overlap certain parts, which you do in this case. So it is important that you do follow the, the steps quite closely. Sounds simple and stupid, but you'll be surprised how many people don't do that or tend to forget it and just carry on with the build. And um, they end up making mistakes. So I'm just adding the last of the little parts in now. The, the, the camera doesn't really pick these up too well. Uh, they are quite small. But everything went in quite well. Uh, but as you can see, some of these parts are overlapping. Hence why uh, I must put them in the 
proper order as suggested on, on the instructions. And then it's time for a little bit of weathering and I'm using Tamiya's Weathering Master Series C and the Gunmetal component. Um, and I'm just uh, dirtying up the unit uh, to make it look worn. So this is where I'm going to um, end the video. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel uh, for my other builds, uh, including this one of course. There is quite a few videos up there for you to have a look at now. If you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, you'll be kept up to date of all of my upcoming builds and of course including this blog. Feel free to leave a comment, hit that like button and of course don't forget to share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.